welcome back to my channel. So it's time for another perfume range review. And this one has been requested so much. I'd say pretty much every day I get a request to do this review and I have done for a while. So I've finally done it. I have been ordering the whole Kayali range of perfumes, the original four and the brand new one as well. So I have been trying them. I'm gonna take you through my first impressions, the longevity, everything, and my opinion on whether these are any good or not. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel. It's all about perfumes. I have hundreds of other perfume reviews, range reviews like this, perfume note videos, so many. So do check them out if you're a perfume fan. Do subscribe if you haven't already, I'd love to have you here. And you guys know I am shooting for that 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. So please join in, show your support. So Kayali, Kayala, is part of the Huda beauty world. Um, Huda, of course, is an incredibly successful Instagram, YouTube star, has this incredibly successful beauty range, makeup range, and she has teamed up with her younger sister on this fragrance range called Kayali, or Kayali. So the brand has like a separate website, separate social media, but I think it all is in with that same umbrella. Kayali is an Arabic word, it translates as my imagination. Of course, Huda is from, well, I don't know if she's born there, but she's from Dubai, that's where she started. Started doing her YouTube channel. And let me read you what their website says about all these perfumes. So it says, it's a refreshing approach to the artistry of Eau de Parfum, inspired by the rich heritage and simple sophistication of the Middle East. Limitless possibilities, personalities, desires. Um, and there's a whole lot here around layering. So they really want you to buy more than one of these fragrances and then layer them. And it has loads of suggestions about how you layer them. I think that they do all feel very Middle Eastern, very Arabic. So I definitely get that, I agree with that. And I do think they all would probably layer fine together. So I see where they're going with, with that. To what extent that is a marketing ploy to make you buy more than one, I don't know. And I think these guys have many millions already, so I don't think it's necessary to buy more than one if you don't want to. So let's go in order of intensity. So there were four perfumes originally released. They are Eau de Parfums, and it's called Collection 101. This is the little sample set you can get. So I'm gonna start with the lightest one, which is called Citrus 08. So this one is definitely lighter than the others. It is not a super, super fresh citrus, like a Dolce & Gabbana light blue or something. It's definitely lemony, but it's still very, um, have some Arabic undertone. It's pretty with a, a rose in it, blackcurrant rhubarb, but then it has this um, mossy undertone. So they've put oak moss in here, which gives this almost a green vetiver um, scent to it. So really citrus is, it's not a misleading name, it is very citrusy, but it's also a green citrus, a mossy citrus. In terms of how it's lasted, it hasn't lasted very well, I have to say. Um, it's definitely the weakest of the range and it doesn't really feel like an Eau de Parfum to me. So overall, I'm saying this is definitely for your, you know, if you wanna buy into the brand um, but you don't want anything heavy, then Citrus is definitely that sort of easygoing, everyday, not heavy perfume at all and not particularly long and perhaps it is would be good for layering with the others. So let's go to Elixir 11. This is nice, this is unusual. I haven't smelt one like this before. So at first I got some really ambery patchouli notes and I thought, oh, this is just another sort of Middle Eastern style, incense style, oriental perfume. But then this green apple, red apple, came through really strong, this apple scent, and that really lifted it. Often I find these type of perfumes too heavy and sickly. 
you know, the jasmine sun back in here, the amber, it can be all a bit too much for me, but having all this red apple really lifted it, and it didn't just stay in the first few seconds like so many apple perfumes do, it, it kept coming through. It also has rose petals in, and I definitely got that light petally feeling in it. So this one is potentially my favourite, the Elixir. So next we have Musk 12. So this is pretty much what it says on the tin, it's a musky perfume but it also has a lot of vanilla in, as well as sandalwood. So I found this to be quite sickly, quite sweet musk, not like the usual clean, fresh musks. This had all this vanilla in as well. It's very unusual to have a musk and a vanilla as the two main notes, because they are kind of opposite vanilla, sweet and warm, whereas musk is fresh and clean and powdery. Overall, this I'd say the vanilla is dominating a little bit more than the musk. And then finally, in this original range, we come to Vanilla 28. Now, this one has a really dark purple liquid, unusual for a purple liquid in a perfume. This one I really liked. It's a proper vanilla, like a vanilla pod, like a vanilla ice cream, like a vanilla sponge in a, you know, a, a cake. It really lasts. Um, I only sprayed one spray and it's definitely dominated over all the others. To me, it's the heaviest. It has tonka bean in and brown sugar and rather than um, traditional vanilla, it's vanilla blossom. So this feels a bit sweeter, a bit feminine, a bit more tonka bean -ier. And I love brown sugar. I could just sit and eat brown sugar and it has that warm. So rather than like a you know, very sweet sugariness. It's this warm sugariness. Very much autumn, winter, I'd say, or evenings, nighttime, quite sexy, quite sensual. Um, so this is a nice interpretation of a classic vanilla smell. Okay, and now we come to the new one. This came out January 2020. It's called Deja Vu White Flower 57. Here it is. All the bottles are this exact shape. They all come in these same packages as well with the gold outside. And then it's like a texture here. And then it has these stars on each side here. And then you open it up like this and inside. And the perfume lives inside like this. So again, this is Nota Parfum. And it's definitely heavy, you guys. When I read the ingredients about it being all these white floral notes, I thought it was going to be really light. It's not. It's super heavy. It has a lot of orange blossom in, but it has this huge amount of Indian jasmine in. So it's a very oriental orange blossom. To me, this is a floral oriental, and I could not escape the smell. It lasted so long. It lasted with great longevity, you could smell it on me. Um, very good in terms of payoff and value for money in that sense. It's definitely oriental, so if you like those kind of Middle Eastern smells, you'll love this. But having these fl white floral notes makes it pretty and very, very feminine. It has a pear and a nectarine in here, which make it warm and they add a warm freshness, definitely, but they aren't particularly dominant. Maybe the sort of nectarine is a little bit, but this is a very much a floral oriental perfume. And those um, fruity notes disappear quite early on. So that's it. That's a rundown of the five perfumes in the range. Let me know which is your favourite. Have you tried them? If you're looking at blind buying them, then I'd say if you like oriental perfumes, if you like that Arabic vibe, then you probably won't be disappointed, perhaps except for the citrus one. So I would say go for it. I think they are good for lasting, they are good quality, and they've done well. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and of course do subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here, show your support. But that's it guys, so thank you so much for watching. As always, I will leave the products linked down below where you can get them America Europe everywhere and that's it guys so I'll see you in the next video bye